Welcome to another quick and dirty tutorial on the new UI system. This tutorial will focus on the world space canvas and also using the event system. Start it off by putting in a track. That's just a model so that we've actually got something to click and attach our world space elements to. Let's set up the position so that it looks on a little bit of an angle to the camera so we can really get the feel for the 3D effects. We're going to be using the event system. So on the camera, we need to add a physics raycaster. The physics raycaster is pretty awesome. It means that we no longer need to write our own raycasting scripts. You know, it does that all for us. For the physics raycaster to work, we need to add colliders. So we're just going to add a bunch of colliders to all of the bits. I'm going to use mesh colliders. It works on boxes, spheres, or any, any sort of collider will do the job. All right, we're going to go ahead now and create a prefab. Um, we'll create a panel first. Um, as you can see, that's massive. But we'll fix that. We set it to world space. In world space, you scale it down. I found 0 0.01 is about a decent scale. We don't need to scale it on the Z axis, um, just on the X and Y. So I'll just set that back to the center. You see it's a little bit big, but it's about the size we'd expect. Um, so now I'm just going to resize it down by hand the rest of the way. I'll add a button to it. Very simple. This video is not intended to show you how to create the panels, just how to put them in and use them. If you want to see ones about creating various menus, check out what my other tutorials. We'll make this button, all we're going to make this button do is destroy itself. So you click on it and it's going to destroy the whole panel. To do that, we need to write a wrapper method for the destroy function. So we'll create a script on the canvas, um, which we'll just call destroy, destroy canvas. Um, we don't want to use the same name as a unity function, things can get confused. So open that up, get rid of the start and update, because we don't actually need those. All we're holding here is a single um, public method called destroy me. And all that's going to do is call destroy on the game object. I'll just save that. We'll trigger that from the button. So we'll just drop down to our button. Go down to the button. Add a listener. And our listener will be destroy canvas, and we'll just select that destroy me method there. We'll make that a prefab, delete it out of the scene. We're done with it now. The next thing we need to add is we need to add the script that's going to accept the events on these. So we're going to add a component, we'll call it new script, um, we'll just call it something silly, um, oh, make, make UI element I guess. All the script is going to do is make the UI elements. This is where the meat of the event system happens. Something cool about the event system, it's the final death of send message. We now no longer have to use send message at all. Instead, we can use proper C sharp interfaces. All of the existing interfaces are in a namespace um, Unity Engine dot event systems. So we'll get that. One we're going to use is I pointer, our handle pointer. Sorry, let me just check. Pointer click handler is the interface we're going to use. Cool thing about Mono Develop, and I'm sure most of our Visual Studio does the same, so you can just go to Refactor and go Implement Interface. That will put the code in for you automatically. 
so you know all of the methods that you have to interface there's no need to look up what the interfaces are we'll take out that error because we don't actually want to throw an error and we'll start with our methods the pointer event data oh, sorry the on pointer click method gets past pointer event data we're going to use that to figure out where the um, player has clicked so we're going to make a new vector screen position and we're going to take event data position x um, event data position y so that gives us the x and y positions of the mouse um, when the user clicked we could use input dot mouse position as well um, but this way it, ma it makes it more generic and then we're also going to use for the third parameter we're going to use um, event data pointer current raycast sorry pointer press raycast um, dot distance the event system does its own raycasts and we can access data from those raycasts Right, so now we have a position on the screen as to where the user's clicked. We need to convert that to a world position. So we're going to go create a new vector 3 and we'll call it instantiate position. Again, we'll go to that event data to find which camera was used for this event. The way we've set it up, we could just use camera dot main. But I mean, setting it up like this is more generic. This will work on multiple cameras. We're just going to use screen to world point and pass in our screen position that we calculated out before. Then we'll go ahead and instantiate our game object. We need to cast it back to a game object because we're going to do a few other things with it. So we'll instantiate our prefab which we'll call um, UI to instantiate make it nice and obvious what we're doing we're going to pass in the instantiate position vector for the rotation we're going to use the camera rotation um, again from the event data the point of using this is this will mean that the the UI element is always facing towards the camera there's other options we could have used too. Um, you could grab the normal from the hit position and use that to determine the rotation to have a, a lie along the axis. But for now we'll just have it face the camera. And then just for fun we'll set the parent to that to the transform that this is on. I'll let you have a look at that code. That's all of the code that we're going to write here. Actually, no, before I do that, I'll add that UI to instantiate game object variable. I use serialized field instead of public um, because serialized field just lets you do it in the inspector, it doesn't let other scripts mess with it. Again, if you want to use public, that's fine. Right, we'll save that. Feel free to pause the video if you want to copy or read that script. Wait till Unity imports it. And there we go, there's our UI to instantiate variable. We're just going to drag the canvas on there. We hit play. It's all we've needed to do. No complicated raycasting scripts anymore. Um, now, whenever we click, we're creating a one of our prefabs. You can see the 3D effect there. The one on the left is further back in the scene. And if you look over on the right on the hierarchy, you can see that they've been created as children's of the appropriate collider that's been hit. So we go again, see there we've got front wheel right, and there's our prefab that we've just created. Thank you for watching, like, comment, subscribe, or request any videos below. Thank you.